Hello and welcome. Well, time is a precious commodity and we all need to find ways to use it wisely, you know, and every parent, of course, wants the best for their children and to give them a wonderful life. But without knowing it, you know, our days seem to fill up very easily with work, with kids, with their schooling, their kinder, um, play dates, you know, the, the kids' hobbies, friends, family commitments, you know, all the things that we actually need to do and places that we need to go. So just life stuff. But, you know, let, let's keep this, this conversation real. And when do parents ever have uh, a balance in life? And is there ever a day that life is just beautifully in sync? Of course not. But that's okay, because one thing that we can do is equip ourselves, I guess, with the tools to know how to be be better manage our time in our life to be able to achieve some form of uh, work-life balance in these, I guess, the busy environments that we live in. The holy grail that we hear about time and time again, and the phrase is, of course, work-life balance. Now, love this phrase or hate it. Um, really, who doesn't want more balance in their life? You know, some call it, and you may have heard of this phrase also, work-life integration. Either way, um, the question is, what does this mean in this busy world that we live in? And really, how is it achievable? Well, lucky for us today, we're joined by our special guest, Yvette Sol- Solvaris, who's going to share some work-life balance hacks to help you feel more in control and on top of things. And she'll be sharing some tips that you can integrate into your life that will work for your family, for your work life, and of course, for you too. <laughs> now, a bit of an introduction about our guest. Uh, Yvette is the director and one of the owners of Ethical Training Solutions, an education and training company. Now, um, Yvette has over 20 years experience in the education industry as a teacher, mentor, manager, and trainer. Thank you for joining us today, Yvette. How are you? I'm really good. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks for having me again. Well, it's great to be chatting with you. And this is something I think that no matter where you are in life, everybody struggles with at some point or other, really. Um, And I don't know about you, but I see time (laughs) similar to the analogy of a a goldfish in in its bowl. Now, just stick with me for a second on this one. (laughs) I know, I know. (laughs) But, you know, a goldfish will grow in accordance, I guess, to the size of the environment that it's in. The bigger the tank, the more likely they are to grow, you know, to sort of to to its environment same thing I I guess goes with our time the more time that we have the more we find to fill it with stuff Um, so I guess the key to managing and allotting our time better you think I think really is just knowing where to put and how to schedule our time I don't know what are your thoughts yeah, I, I completely agree with that. If you've got a game plan that when you wake up in the morning and you know what you're going to do between the time you wake up and the time you go to bed, then you're going to have balance in your life. You're yes. going to know exactly what's going to happen next. Yeah. And I'd love to know from your point of view, over the last few months, you know, what has been your personal experience with parents you know, coming to you and the business uh, for advice on how to best deal with um, just life stresses? Yeah, at the moment, obviously, with this whole COVID thing going around, a lot of people are homeschooling, were homeschooling their kids, and they were just finding it so hard. They either had to work from home and homeschool their kids and be a good partner, be a good mum, be a good dad, an auntie, whatever they were doing, and they were going insane. So I had a lot of people, a lot of family, friends, relatives, um, even clients come to me going, how can I manage working from home or studying from home because some of them were studying as well and homeschool my child and just life in general. I've suddenly got all this time, but I don't have time because I've got everything that I have to do on top of it. And um, a lot of people were just coming to me asking, what do I do and how do I do it? Yeah. And on that, you know, Everyone is trying, I guess, to be the perfect parent or caregiver or partner or friend, daughter, son, sister, whatever, you know. Um, So I'd love to know from your point of view, like, why do you think we all strive, you know, for such perfection in our lives? Like, really, where is this pressure and this motive all come from, do you think? I think we put it on ourselves, we, we see things out there. You go on to social media, you go on to Instagram and there's like happy, smiling people going, hey, look at me. And you're kind of like, gee, they've got it all together. I need to be like that. And then you put the pressure onto yourself and, you know, you want to be just like what you're seeing in front of you. So I feel like it's you that you're putting the pressure on yourself more than others putting it on you. 
because yeah. at the end of the day, no one really cares if you're, you know, if you're perfect or not, I guess. That's why yeah. I look at it anyway. It's you who cares. That's the thing. So we're sort of striving to have what other people have as opposed to just yeah. being happy with what we ha- already have in our lives, do you think? Yeah, exactly right. People try to outdo each other and the only way they can do that is by being better than the other person or more perfect than the other person and that's where things get out of control but you're putting that pressure on yourself. Nobody else is doing it to you. Yeah, not healthy either. No. In in that, do you think that, I guess, striving for, for this level of perfection in our lives causes or is the cause really of so much stress and undue stress in our lives? Um, and all of this, I guess, we're putting on ourselves, as you just said, you know, consciously or, or subconsciously without knowing it. Yeah, definitely. Um, sometimes, sometimes people do things without knowing the pressure they're putting on themselves and they just think it's normal behaviour when in fact it's, it's not normal. You know, it's not normal to try and juggle 10 million things and not have time for lunch <laughs> like I can talk. I, I must admit I'm guilty of that sometimes. But um, everybody is. That's just life in general. But we really need to find a healthy balance so we don't wear ourselves out, so we have that time to be the perfect caregiver, parent, partner, auntie, uncle, whatever you are, colleague even, if you can take that time to make yourself better and more relaxed, it's going to help those around you. Yeah, yeah. And also I guess the fear of failure for everyone is something that is really quite real, all dependent, I guess, on on what um, people are striving for and the reasons why they're striving to achieve something. Um, Mm. But I'd love to know from your point of view, um, you know, Mm. what can we really learn from failure? Because it's not always a bad thing, is it? No, failure to me is a good thing. And you're probably thinking, I've lost the plot, which is fine. (laughs) A lot of people do when I say this. I always see everything as a learning experience. So if you fail in something, it doesn't matter because you can take what you've learned from that failure and make it a success. So you can learn what you did wrong and see how you can make that right. At the time, you may not think that, and that's fine, but don't put that pressure on yourself because if you do fail, you can fix it. It's fine. It's not going to be the end of the world. You don't have to be perfect. It's fine to make mistakes because you'll learn from those mistakes and hopefully history won't, won't repeat. Well, they always say, if you haven't failed, you haven't tried, which I love. I love, I love that, that phase, uh, that phrase. And the other thing is too, I guess, in the world of, you know, entrepreneurship and as I've sort of over the last few years been sort of um, obviously studying it and, 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 and sort of yeah. been an entrepreneur myself in, in building and, and um, scaling, you know, Kittypedia, time and time, time and time again, I've heard the, the phrase, you know, fail fast. The more times you fail, the better it is because you learn, as you just said, you learn, you take whatever it is that, that you've, you've put into to, to that and then you sort of use that information to sort of to propel yourself forward. So it's, all, it's always a good thing, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, certainly is. Failure is good. Don't be scared of it. Yeah. And I guess a lot of the time when people um, are scared to try different things in their life, I guess they're they're trying to have some, I I guess, sense of control in their lives. So in saying that, um, you know, what advice can you have to maybe um, share with people to maybe help them regain um, a sense of control? Uh, Just in in general, I guess, with, with, and, and, and this is more in terms, I guess, on the, on the topic of work life balance and feeling like their lives are so, so busy and everything else. So, yeah, I guess in, in, in this sort of, in this realm, yeah. I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a hard one, right? Because control, if you're out of control, how do you regain control? That's yeah. a hard one, right? And I guess I always say you need to just have a really good look at how you spend your time. I mean, I had a client in here today who strives for perfection, um, said he had no time to create his online course and, you know, I'm such a perfectionist, but I spend a good hour or two a night on TikTok looking at random videos. And I'm like, dude, no, you could be using that time to do something else, to work towards your online course, like even as reading an article or something. (laughs) You have time, you just don't know how to use it. And that's why he was so out of control. Like he didn't know how to regain his control again because he didn't know what to do. It's just a matter of looking at those little points in time in your day that you can use to, you know, gain back some sort of momentum and control. Yeah. 
And I guess another thing too, maybe is just to do what's best for you and your loved ones. You know, even if it's not your perfect image as well, like sometimes getting back to that point about perfection, sometimes it's, it's just a point of maybe just um, good enough is, is enough sometimes, do you think? Yeah, you, you don't have to be perfect. You know, perfect and perfection is different for everyone. So my image of perfect may not be the image of perfect for someone else. And that's fine. I really couldn't care less. I'm happy with it. Um, and if someone else isn't happy with it, well, I didn't ask for their opinion anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. so as long as you're happy within yourself, that's the main thing. Don't worry what other people think. Just be yourself and have fun with it and try yeah. to find that balance as well. And definitely, I think just letting go, you know, what we don't finish on one day is always going to be there the next day. If it's the dishes or what have you, I can always do it the next day. And um, I think another another thing also, I'd love to know your thoughts on this, is just not to let um, our work consume our thoughts too much. You know, Um, I think one thing that we, a lot of us do is sort of take our our work home with us and that can sort of impact the quality of our home life. What What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Um, Look, especially now with people working from home, it's a huge thing. You need to shut the door behind you. And my husband, I've just taught him how to do this. He's got a dedicated workspace in our house and he actually makes the effort of closing the door. He actually physically closes it because that's the end of his workday. He cannot take anything out of that room and bring it into another part of the house because that's work. So it can still stay in that room. It will still be there in the morning but you just need to leave it behind and do the best you can. I mean, I put my phone on do not disturb at a certain time, like I think at 10 or 11 p.m. I know that's a bit late, but I don't need to be bothered with emails, social media messages, nothing like that. They can all get lost. They'll still be there when I wake up in the morning. <laughs> so lost. they will be. They're not, they're not going to disappear from my phone, are they, in those couple of hours that I'm sleeping or chilling out? They can all wait. They can all get so, lost, as you just said. I love that. They can all get lost. <laughs> you know what I mean? They can just go away for a bit and let me just chill out for a bit yeah (laughs) now we've published your article and the title is how work-life balance is not as hard as you think so for someone who hasn't read the article yet can you please give us a little bit of an overview what it's about and just tell us what inspired you to write it yeah well work-life balance people think it's this whole massive thing that we have to do to achieve and it's not really i mean I must admit, I'm one of the crazy people who have a crazy life, who do crazy million, zillion things at once. And I've just learned in the last maybe 12 months that I have to start structuring my day a little bit better. Otherwise, I will lose the plot. So, you know, even little things, it's not like a big thing. People think, oh, my goodness, I have to put every little thing down that I do. And, you know, it it can just be as simple as a 30-minute walk. That's still a bit of a life work-life balance because you're leaving everything behind and you're just getting out of wherever you are and having that time to yourself. And then when you come back, you know, you leave what you're doing before and don't go back to it if it's like coming home from work or something like that. It, it's easy to do. You just got to know how to do it. Yeah. Well, tell us then, what is your be- best work-life balance tip then? My favourite thing to do and my favourite tip is to schedule your day the night before. Now, this is going to sound weird, but I use Google Calendar. So before I go to bed, I don't just put appointments on there. I put tasks that I have to do the next day on there. So my phone is constantly giving me an alarm. Oh, you've got to do this. You've got to do that. Even if it's a 30 minute walk or, you know, I've got a dinner reservation or I've got to get a project done or whatever. It's all on my calendar for that day. And it just keeps me going and keeps me balanced because then I know that it has to be done and it will be done. And then I can go and relax. That's, that's easiest. Everybody's got a calendar on your phone. Just schedule your day the night before. There's no guesswork the next day then. So you're saying to add structure to our day, yes? Yeah, yeah. Not not so much that you are so rigid and you can't deviate from it because, hey, things get in the way. But at least you kind of got a picture of what your day looks like, of the things that you have to do. Um, even if some of the things lap over to the next day because you didn't get them done, at least you know they're there. So it's kind of out of here and onto something that you can physically see and you know it's there so you're not too stressed about it or wondering about it and yes. like when you can get it done. I find that works amazingly for me. And I, I mean, I've studied this quite a lot as well and a lot of people do suggest, a lot of experts in this space say instead of writing a to-do list, because on the to-do list we don't allocate how long each task is going, going to take 
for yeah. example. But when you block it out in your calendar, you actually say to yourself, okay, so this particular thing is going to take this amount of time. So that from, from that perspective, we actually work out our day um, in hours and minutes as opposed to living by a to-do list. Because you, you look yeah. at your to-do list and it can f sometimes feel overwhelming because we, we're not getting through the tasks as fast as we want. But when you allocate it into a calendar and it's slotted into that time, um, yeah. and as you know, that that happens at this point and there's nothing else happening um it does give you a, a greater sense of peace of mind i feel do you think yeah yeah that's what i mean it works for me um my business partner's just started doing it as well she's like oh that's a really cool idea and you know that's what she's done as well it just works really well for me because i know what i'm doing how long it's going to take and i can you know to see the future i guess i'll see what my day is going to look like yeah so I'm not too overwhelmed. And then I can also see if I've got too much in my day, then it's something I can push back to another day. And that's a great thing because I know what I, can handle overwhelmed. what I can't handle. And so I'm not overwhelmed. So even if it's just three things that I'm doing that day, at least I know I'm going to do those three things really well and then take a break and not worry about it. Yeah. And I guess for, for, for busy mums as well, um, thinking about delegating um, tasks, a, a lot of mums can share tasks to give each other a break um, and to be able to create some more time in their day as well. And for example, things like carpooling and all of that stuff, it's just a, maybe a matter of maybe thinking outside the box and, and making a list of you know where the opportunities are to be able to help maybe delegate um, and share different tasks between, I guess, the community of, of mums and, and parents that, that, that you're in um, and then reaching out to them as well with, I guess, with a commitment um, of sort of saying to yourselves and to, I guess, your community of, of um, families around you, you know, we are going to help each other to achieve better work-life balance. What do you think about that yeah 100 percent. you all have to work together to achieve a common goal i guess you could say and the fact that working mums you know you might have a friend who can pick up your child from school because their child's at the same school and you know you can pick them up after work or you know even carpooling as you said um even if there's after school activities that you have in common there's so much you can do as a community to come together and to help each other and it's really important especially for you know mums or caregivers and you know, all parents and things like that. Yeah. It's really it's, important. I guess we've just got to have a commitment to actually wanting to have um, work-life balance and just have balance in our yeah. life and to, to be able to yeah. do that. I guess we really need to be able to put some time to, towards it. Yeah. And as I was saying before, you know, making a list where the opportunities are and making that commitment that it's not just for you, but for everybody else around you as well, which is a yeah. good thing. But, you know, in your view, yeah. like, why do you think that we actually need work-life balance? Because if we don't have it, we'll go crazy insane. <laughs> That's what I say. You need it. You need it for, your, for the people around you, not just for yourself. You need to devote time to your partner, to your family, to your colleagues. You need to be present. And that's a really big thing at the moment. If you can't be present in the environment that you're in, then you're not helping those around you, nor are you helping yourself or your relationships. Because that's how you build relationships, I guess, is making time for them. And that's where work-life balance comes into it. Yeah. And I guess if we don't put energy back in to ourselves as well, like if we're just constantly putting energy out, we're definitely going to experience burnout at some point as well. Um, and I guess the common signs of burnout uh, that we're sort of stressed and our immune system takes a little bit of a, a hit. Um, and a lot of parents um, maybe, you know, having sort of been through so much in the last few months with homeschooling and juggling everything as well, maybe experiencing um, the early signs of burnout, if not, um, hopefully not, but experiencing burnout at the moment. Um, and this also may end up, um, as we are in, in winter, sort of having them experience um, colds and flus and, and, and God forbid, forbid any yeah. any exposure to COVID-19 we all we all need to be as strong and healthy as possible at the moment but no 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 parent really has time to be sick at all um and I guess what we just constantly keep doing is just pushing through that perpetual um flight or fight sort of mentality is that we just keep yeah. pushing um but if you keep doing that eventually we're just going to crash and burn so we have we just have to make a commitment to our health I guess but you know burnout really is preventable um as well so it's just a matter of really listening to our bodies and knowing what the signs are but the most important thing i think here maybe is, is to actually do something about it there's no point in in recognizing that we are not looking after ourselves and then just not actually action it i don't know what are your thoughts yeah i agree with you i mean 
you know, you don't have to do anything too crazy. <laughs> Even the littlest thing makes a difference is what I say. Yeah. So, and you need to do that for yourself. You, you're not going to help any of those people around you if you're burnt out, if you're out of control, if you're not coping, then you're not going to help people around you. So you need to do it for yourself and for other people. Yeah. So in your view then, I know you mentioned before about um, allocating stuff into our calendars, but you know, what else is, uh, how else can we, I guess, schedule our day? What else can we be doing to maybe achieve that, that um, <laughs> work-life balance? <laughs> There's no magic formula, really. You just need to um, just kind of look at what you're doing, even if it's just as simply as turning your phone off for an hour, sitting down at the table, having a meal with your loved ones is kind of really important. Um, even if it's at work, I know when I was, before I started ETS, at our workplace, we all used to come together for about an hour each day, put our phones away and all have lunch together as a group. It was like a family lunch, but we did it every day and that was our break from our busy training schedules that we had because we're all training and teachers and everything but we just shut everything down our students went out and did whatever and we just all had lunch together and even something as simple as that can help you structure your day and you know know you've got that little bit of time to do something for yourself yeah and um you know i guess the the other thing is too is as you said before about being organized and and creating uh, a schedule and a routine um, you know, thinking about this aloud, but you know, it really does help us control our time. And um, when when we control our time, I guess we, sometimes we can be surprised how how much more time that we actually have to devote, um, you know, our, our energy to other things. And that does bring some sense of balance into our life. What do you think? You know, I agree with that. I remember reading a book called I think it was a four hour week or something yep. like that. Or, yeah. And that was cramming, you know, a whole lot of things into a small space of time and delegating tasks. And that's a, a great thing to do as well. You know, you need to, you know, the, the more time you schedule, the more time you see what you've got to yourself. And you'll be surprised, actually, that some things don't take as much time as you think they would. Yeah. And um, yeah. Another thing as well, which of course we have to do each week is, is, is our food shopping and, and things, for example, like, you know, creating your food shopping lists and then, but then the list of meals, only buying the food realistically that you are needing for those meals for the week. Um, you know, a, a lot of families at the moment um, are going through some financial sort of hardship um, and let's face it you know, when we really look at what some of the meal provider kits um, and the food delivery services, which we see everywhere, and I, I don't want to bring up their brand names, um, yeah. but, you know, I'm talking about that, that, yeah. that make life easy for us because we, you know, subscribe to, um, you know, that food delivery service mm -hmm. and in any which way, shape or form. Realistically, what, the, what they are doing is just um, giving us the opportunity to not have to think about, you know, what is on the food shopping list and then what meals are we going to eat each week. But we can actually do that ourselves um, and doing it um, can save time and money and just being organised, like we were saying before, and there's no reason why we can't do it ourselves and, and save ourselves time and money. I don't know. What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, yeah, you know, that's really true. One thing that I've been doing at home, I've got, you know, our house has got like three Google Homes in different rooms. So one of them's in the kitchen. So when we're in the fridge, we just set up a shopping list on Google Home and whoever goes to the supermarket's got it on their phone and it's like tick, 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 don't have to think, done, home, finished sort of thing. And it's just so much easier. Yeah, it's about being organised and being able to do that. And, yeah. and it takes time and takes practice if you're not used to it, but it does happen. Yeah. And, and as we we're saying before, you just, you actually need to really want to have that balance in your life. And then you, you yeah. start to sort of strive to find ways to do it. Now, another thing you mentioned in your article um, also is that, you know, and it's true that exercise make, makes us feel better, both mentally and physically, which we know. Um, and yeah. just the simple act of moving helps us to release um, stress and tension um, and you list some really great ways of um, incorporating movement into our day um, and the first one I love the idea of the fact of um, if people are um, working from a, an office even if you're working from home you can have um, a phone meeting while walking um, yeah. and I think that that's a really 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 great idea as well and or just to get up a bit early each day to go for a walk um, yeah. yeah is this something that you've been integrating into your day at all 
Yeah, my business partner and I started that last year. We started the habit of, oh, we need to have a meeting, or we need to brainstorm an idea. Let's get up and let's just go for a walk. So we'll just walk around the streets or the shopping centre. We're near a shopping centre here at work. But that's your and meeting. it's amazing. What was that, sorry? But that's your meeting as opposed to having yeah, a sit-down meeting. meeting. Yeah, yeah. We're walking around talking about this project or whatever we're doing, but we're getting fresh air, we're getting a change of scenery, our steps are, you know, increasing, we're doing more steps. And we're not talking, you know, like marathon walking or anything like that. We're just having a conversation while we're walking about work. We're just getting out of our office, getting away from our desk, another environment, getting some exercise, making ourselves mentally feel better. And it's funny, we usually find the ideas flow better when we're doing that than sitting here in our office trying to brainstorm ideas. Yeah. So that's where that idea came from. Definitely for, for, for working parents, it's, it's a great idea. And, you know, for, I guess, stay-at-home parents as well um, is maybe just scheduling in a minimum, you know, sort of 20-minute walk a day. Um, and no matter the in- intensity, it's just making the commitment to moving. And you still obviously get the benefits for, of um, like relieving stress and tension. Um, if people can obviously get to the gym, that's a, that's a given, but gyms are only just starting to open again. <laughs> yeah, um, right. <laughs> but of course we've got all the home workouts as well. So and there's been some, some great ones. And of course we've got um, Sam Wood and a whole heap of um, others out there as well. But um, I guess the whole thing is if, if you have a healthy um, lifestyle and are living a he- healthy lifestyle, then the chances are the children are going to follow as well. So it's for us to set a, a a good example for everyone around us but from what I'm hearing and from what I've, I've learned from your article it's really about finding a routine that you can commit to it's about the commitment to it as well do you think 